Happy birthday to the X380. She's still my lady. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's your boy, DJ Soul Force. Uh, the month of August is always a busy month for me. First of all, uh, it's my birthday. My birthday is in August. And uh, three years ago, in August 2015, uh, this quadcopter was a birthday gift to me from my lovely wife. Thank you, baby. Most importantly, is the X380 is the quadcopter that really helped jump started my channel guys so I owe a lot to this quad it was also my first GPS quad uh, back in 2015 there weren't a lot of choices out there for big brushless motor 350 millimeter size uh, drones like this one uh, if you couldn't afford the uh, DJI Phantom 3 standard at that time was coming in over 700 bucks <laughs> and uh, the only other choices was uh, WL Toys had the V303 Seeker which the uh, X380 is an upgraded Seeker guys uh, you had the Cheerson CX20 and Wakari had the big old ugly elephant uh, I believe that was the QRX350 or something like that. <laughs> Those were the the, uh, the budget choices for GPS drones at that time, guys. Uh, mine came in around $309 with nothing on it. This is a uh, XKX380 standard version, guys. Uh, here you can see mine is one of the original x380s off the assembly line uh before they did the firmware update before this button mine is labeled photo and uh later in that year uh they came out with a firmware upgrade and this button was changed and labeled to fap which is the fly around point which is the same as point of interest mode guys just like most of the XK products, uh, the X380 came with a poorly written instruction book. There weren't uh, a lot of videos out on it. Uh, there was only a couple of guys that reviewed it. And uh, most of the guys that reviewed it never highlighted none of the issues or problems it was having. Uh, the X380 helped me jumpstart my channel by being uh, one of those guys who went out and and, and researched and, and did a lot of searching for information and every time I learned something new about the X380 I was happy to post it on my channel and share it <laughs> with my subscribers which was around 500 subscribers back then and uh, next thing I know uh, everyone was coming to me with their X380 problems and questions and I had no problems uh, answering all those questions if I didn't have the answer I did the research for the guys and then provided them with the answers <laughs> and <laughs> guys started labeling me the X380 guru and uh, if you had a problem with your X380 just write to DJ Soul Force he'll give you the answer <laughs> Uh, the X380 came stripped down with nothing on it, but from the factory, it had power port for a gimbal, and it also had uh, a port for the control signal, being that the uh, remote controller was already equipped to point a gimbal up and down by spinning this dial, but uh, there were no instructions on, uh, <laughs> you know, how, how to wire it up, or even what the... Uh, the sequence of the wires were fast forward uh, to the following year 2016 uh, a lot of guys started putting the Walkera G2D gimbal on their X380s and we encountered issues with that as well uh, some guys were reversing the wires and plugging the, the gimbal in wrong and burning up the flight controller oh this thing was a mess the X380 not to mention uh, the toilet bowl issues and one thing that really tickles me about the X380 is this quadcopter is the quad that invented the name K-1000. 
calibration dance. <laughs> Remember to calibrate the X380, you had to hold the left state down, flip this uh, headless mode button three times, and uh, uh, the, the flight indicator on the back, which by the way, guys, the X380 doesn't have telemetry. It doesn't have uh, any smart features whatsoever. The smartest thing it can do is uh, uh, automatic pan and a point of interest mode. At any rate, uh, all your data from the quad to the pilot comes via this uh, flight indicator light in the back. So you would enter the calibration mode and the light would flicker and flash. Uh, then you had to pull the stick down, flip the button three more times to lock in that information. Then you went to the the vertical or the horizontal spin it around three times uh, until the light changed back to solid and you flip the switch three more times to save the data it was a mess we we won't even get into how to calibrate the uh <laughs> the sticks on the transmitter or how to calibrate the gyros if if you got an x380 and you find that it's drifting and you think you might want to use the trim buttons there was a, a calibration procedure for calibrating the gyros that was never printed and uh i don't think i even ever covered it in any of my reviews but without using any of the sticks if you take the go home button and flip it 12 times or more uh, all the lights on the quad will blink uh, make sure it's down on a flat level surface when the lights stop blinking pow you've calibrated the gyros all the reviews and all the videos I did which this quad by the way has the most videos I've ever posted on my channel for one quad copper copter uh, is the X380. One thing I never did in all of those reviews guys, I've never taken my X380 out for a long range test flight to the uh, edge of its range and see what's going to happen and see if it's going to come back. <laughs> uh, after putting the 3D gimbal on it, the uh, Wakara gimbal on it and my Xiaomi Yi cam, I never, uh, I didn't have FPV on it, so I never trusted sending it out that far, not knowing where it was at and whether it would come back or not. Of course, back then we didn't have these little puppies here. This is a Ishin TX03 AIO camera, and here you can see I have a external battery Velcro to her butt <laughs> to power the TX03. And besides, I got a, a spare one in the closet, guys. Since uh, she's three years old now, I figured I'd go ahead and send it out on a long-range test flight just to uh, see how far we could get it out. I brought it back to my field, and I flew in my normal flight route that I test all the bugs. So I wanted to see if the X380 can make it out to bugs territory and uh, return home safely. I did that. She did it made it back home and uh <laughs> i'll share that video with you guys coming up next pow guys you can see i put a little counterweight on the back of the camera that's because uh when you first crank this uh when you first crank up the quad copter the the, the g2d gimbal is going to go into an auto calibration mode and you want to have your camera pretty much as close to balance as you can before you turn it on and that's going to keep your uh, gimbal nice and smooth without counter fighting itself <laughs> here you can see from this dial I can tilt my gimbal up and down what I'm going to do is put it mine in a fixed position and leave it there uh, I have FPV on the quad, but not through this camera lens, so I, <laughs> while flying, I won't be able to see exactly what I'm uh, taping here, guys. Like I said, the X380 was not that intelligent. This monitor that I have on the X380, this is a, a, a toy monitor that came from another WL Toys quadcopter. I can't remember. I think the X, uh, XK X300 or something like that. But uh, at any way, guys, there's no telemetry on the screen. It's not very intelligent. Uh, all of the pilot's messages come from this LED in the back here, guys. That double green right there indicates that we have enough gps to take off so let's go ahead and do an automatic takeoff press and hold that button 
We are recording on board. I'm going to run back to the command center and start the FPV video on the screen recorder. I have enough faith in her <laughs> that uh, I can let her hover for a while. Now, in the past, a lot of guys experienced toilet bowl effect from the X380. Uh, you can see right here, I just took off. I didn't do no compass calibration. Even though she drifted a few feet, <laughs> I have no toilet bowl effect. The quad hovers, uh, we got about 11 mile per hour wind out here, guys. It's been a while since I've flown her. She's been on the shelf since this time last year. <laughs> What I want to do with the X380 is something I've never done before, is just take it straight out for a range test. Let's see if, uh, if she can reach Bugs territory, <laughs> which is straight out beyond this tree line, about a thousand meters, and we should hit another uh, housing subdivision, guys. I'm going to pull back under the shade a little bit. And we can get a look at our FPV. She's not the fastest bird in the world. But I tell you what guys, a big seller with the X380 back when it first hit the market was 30 minutes of flight time. <laughs> This toy monitor, I don't expect this one to, to fly the whole the whole trip, but uh, this monitor here, my tablet, I'm using the Esheen ROTG2 uh, on-the-go receiver. She's a big bird, and she's big and black. I can see it. <laughs> Being that it's not an intelligent bird, guys, uh, this one has no flight restrictions. This one don't have no uh, intelligent features. It's not always asking for firmware updates. In fact, there's only been <laughs> there's only been one firmware update for this thing. Since we don't have telemetry, that's why it's uh, important for me to fly at FPV so I can get some landmarks, and we'll do uh, take it out until we hit uh, that housing division back there. I can't estimate this distance guys, uh, I'm not good at stuff like that, but what I will do is occasionally uh, give it a stick command, like right now, let's stop. The highway to the left is my uh, trail to follow, and there you can see coming up soon is that subdivision. Now what scares me about this flight guys is I've never done this with the X380. And I'm not sure if she's going to stop and come back home. Look like she she hit a point. She stopped. She stopped on her own. I 
that could be the edge of our control signal. Let me step back out. Let's bring the tablet out. Get from under the pavilion. She seems to be hovering. And she's spinning now the reason why I'm not so scared to do this to today guys is uh <laughs> I got a I got a spare x380 in the closet at home I still have control of the bird we made it to uh, we made it to that subdivision Our FPV is starting to break up guys, but I would have to say yes, we are at that subdivision. I don't have very much control over the sticks. I'm going to go ahead and hit return to home. The bird position itself, she's going to fly back home backwards. Uh, there was a feature in the uh, X380 ground station where you could go in and... Uh, I thought I had done mine where you can program it to face home on its way home. That ground station was a mess. So uh, once you went in it to set some parameters and was successful at saving those settings, uh, your best bet was never to go back in the ground setting or the ground, <laughs> ground control program again. So I never went back to change mine again. It's the only way home. We can't yaw the bird around. We can't make any stick commands. She is on her way back. She's flying in backwards. Hopefully I'll have line of sight of it soon. As soon as I see it, I'm going to cancel that return to home. And just fly it around the lake here a little bit. It's a beautiful day today gonna be hard to tell where she's at because <laughs> she's flying backwards <laughs> nice view of where we've been but I want to see where we're going right now And another thing, guys, the X380 takes her damn time coming home. Uh, that's why I always suggest that you fly this with a timer. <laughs> because if you fly around and you're too far away from home and you go into critical battery, uh, critical LVC warning, you're going to find sometimes you may not have enough power to make it back home. It is so slow coming home. The thing is, she's flying backwards, so I don't know, should I pull backwards on a stick to speed it up? There she is right there. Or push forward on the stick. No stick commands. She's locked in coming home. She's back in my sight now, so I'll go ahead and cancel that. 
let's bring her down slowly she's a big bird <laughs> I should have let it come home and see where it was gonna land but we will test the return to home accuracy at the end of this flight guys uh, this thing will fly for almost 30 minutes those are fairly new batteries I have in her I gave her new batteries for her birthday last year <laughs> The G2D gimbal was a pretty decent combo for this bird. It wasn't the most perfect bird, uh, a perfect video with that gimbal because you're still going to get that left to right shake. The X380 really needed a three axis gimbal, but guys if you go back and look at some of my older videos, uh, three axis gimbals apparently emit more radio or RF noise and <laughs> I think I tested two two different three axis gimbals on the X380 and they just didn't work that well it would send the bird into it, an extreme toilet bowl it would go into a toilet bowl effect that you couldn't recover from unless you just did a power kill with the pull the throttle down and crash the bird <laughs> she was a great alternative to paying uh, uh, 700 over 700 bucks for a Phantom 3 professional not all the smart features but uh, after the first firmware update came along uh, the X380 was updated with a feature called FAP the photo button was changed and it says FAP and that stood for fly around point which was your early version of point of interest by pressing the FAP button you can see the uh, flight indicator on the back of the bird went to a solid green it's in the FAP mode which is actually just auto pan it's gonna stay right there in one spot and spin around 360 degrees if I want to make that point my point of interest you pull back on the throttle let go of the sticks and now that original point where she was doing the FAP should have became the point of interest but uh, mine is flashing double red I'm gonna come out of that mode I think uh, I'm in LVC that's her only two modes was a uh, auto pan and point of interest mode <laughs> she does have fail safe for uh, low voltage supposedly I've never had a chance to check that maybe we could do it now but uh, as pretty as it looks again guys that field is pretty wet so what we're gonna do from there is just a return to home test it should uh, ascend a few feet and return back to home. Where did we take off from? Right over there. Looks like my return to home altitude is pretty daggone low. <laughs> and like I said, the X380 <laughs> has no sense of urgency when it's time to come home guys uh, she takes her time coming home she takes her time ascending and descending I'm gonna kill that return to home uh, she's on the wrong side of the fence <laughs> okay I have no more control uh, except for throttling down so she's in critical yeah she just went to critical uh, once it reaches critical LVC uh, the bird's gonna do what it want to do <laughs> in most cases it's about to land right where it's at so you're in trouble if you see that red light flashing 
rapidly like that guys not too much to say about it guys there's lots and lots of videos on my channel uh, like I said this is one of the birds that helped jumpstart my channel because uh, when the X380 was first released there wasn't a lot of information on it and uh, guys like myself every time we found out something new about the X380 we were happy to share it and uh, Actually, that's, that's the basis of my channel today. I never wanted to be a review guy. I was just sharing information that I found out about this big old beast. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. The XK X380. It's a third anniversary with me. It's your boy, DJ Soul Force. Pow! We're out of here.